When Cupid, when Cupid sees her limbs, he faints and falls down in a very unsteady consciousness. Indeed, she can agitate even millions of Cupids. I have seen it myself on this earth. Like that, the Mahachan sing about Radha's natural Rupa Lavanya. So this is one quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 127, which is in Shrishi Vilap Kusumanjali given by Ananda Das Babaji. So, and this is actually what we want to do today. We want to look what kind of quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amita are in the Vilap Kusumanjali, because there are many. And because yesterday we had a verse number 80 of Shrishi Vilap Kusumanjali in the Sunday sharing, I thought maybe it's good to start there, if you agree. <clears throat> Otherwise, if you have any other idea and you want to um, find a quote yourself, do it anytime and we can also share about this. Also, maybe for next time, you can look also in Radharasa Sudanidi and other scriptures for quotes of Chaitanya Charitamrita and why they are quoted to underline what. Because Ananda Das Babaji usually underlines something which he is writing and then he is giving a quote. And it's very interesting and very deep. So let us see what is in verse number 80 of Sri Shivila Pusumanjali, quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. It starts actually from the beginning. <laughs> because I will also read, like I said, um, what Ananda Das Babaji wants to underline. So what is the theme and why he is taking that quote? So he is making notes of the verse. In a vision, Sri Raghunath relishes Sri Sri Radha Madhava's Vana Vihara and the sweetness of their love songs. And when this vision disappears, he feels great pain. He is completely absorbed in Sri Radharani. Other than she, no one can soothe the pain of his separation. Sri Radha embodies the quint essence of the Ladini Shakti. Ladini Koraya Krishna Asvadhana Dana. Ladini Tvaraya Kore Bhaktera Poshana. Here's the quote, Chaitanya Chavit Amrita. The Ladini potency makes the Lord Rasika Sheka, the king of relishes, and gives him the relish of Lila. And when it enters the devotee's hearts, it gives them the bliss of Krishna's devotional service. So, here is the underlining. Ladini potency makes the Lord Rasika Sheka. So, without Radharani, Krishna is not Rasika Sheka. And this quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is underlining that. 
So we were reading this yesterday, but today just the quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita are uh, again quoted. So there's another one, another quote. The gopis are the greatest devotees, it is said here. So Anandadas Babaji is quoting again. Atma Sukha Dukha Gopira Nahika Vichara Krishna Sukha Hetu Chesta Mano Vyavahara Krishna Lagi Ara Sapkuri Parityaga Krishna Sukha Hetu Kore Shuddha Anuraga Chaitanya Charit Amrita The gopis don't consider their own happiness and distress. Their pure love makes them act just for Krishna's pleasure. For Krishna they give up everything. Their pure love causes them just to act for Krishna's happiness. And Sri Radharani is again the greatest of them all. So especially Chaitanya Charit Amita Adilila for is showing us what actually Krishna feels about Radharani. Krishna is starting in this explanation with Gopi Bhav. First he is actually discussing with Ramananda Roy about Gopi Bhav. Glorification of Radharani. So now we jump to Chaitanya Charit Amrita, text 127. Whatever pleasure I get from tasting my love for Srimati Radharani, she tastes 10 million times more than me by her love. Whatever pleasure I get from tasting my love for Srimati Radharani, she tastes ten million times more than me by her love. So we get a little impression what actually Krishna feels about her love. And we remember that this is one of the inner wishes of Krishna, why he wants to come here as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he wants to experience exactly that, what he is saying here. She tastes 10 million times more. I also want <laughs> I also want to have this experience. So we will go on with text 128. Just as I am the abode of all mutually contradictory characteristics, 
So Krishna is the abode of all mutually contradictory characteristics. And so Rata's love is always full of similar contradictions. That's a very interesting point. And now there comes the points. Why? Rata prema vibhu yara bati te nahitani tatapi sekshane kshane patoi sadai. Rata's love is all pervading, leaving no room for expansion. But still, it is expanding constantly. We heard about the philosophy Achintya Beda Abeda Tattva. We heard about this. So in the same way, one and different not understandable. So here we hear that Radharani has her love has similar characteristics. Text one hundred twenty nine. Yaha vai guru vastu nahi sunishchita tatapi guru ra dharma gorava varchita. There is certainly nothing greater than her love. But her love is devoid of pride. That is the sign of its greatness. Again, it's amazing. She has the greatest love. Usually, if someone has the greatest, he wants to show. But Radharani's love is devoid of pride. Completely devoid. And especially that is the sign again of its greatness, the greatness of that love. Nothing is purer than her love. But its behavior is always perverse and crooked. Nothing is purer than her love, but the behavior of that love is perverted and crooked. What is that? Amazing. We can understand that she is going out in the night, leaving home, her husband, the elders, and she is going to meet her beloved secretly. All glories to Radha's love for Krishna. the enemy of the demon Mura, 
All glories to Radha's love for Krishna. Although it is all pervading, it tends to increase in every moment. Although it is important, it is devoid of pride. And although it is pure, it is always beset with duplicity. Text 132 Se Premara Shri Radhika Parama Ashroi Se Premara Ami Hai Kevala Vishoi Sri Radhika is the highest abode of that love, and I am its only object. Vishaya Chatiya Sukha Amara Asvala Ama haite koti guna ashvara alad. I taste the bliss to which the object of love is entitled. But the pleasure of Rata, the abode of that love, is ten million times greater. That's also amazing, isn't it? After material standards, when you give something really precious, you give to someone, then he should be in bliss. He should have most bliss. But no, it's vice versa. Radharani's love is so great and she feels the bliss that actually she is giving bliss to him. That's her bliss. The abode of that love is 10 million times greater. Ashroya Chatiya Shukkapaite Manadaya Yatne Ashadi Denari Ki Kari Upaya. My mind races to taste the pleasure experienced by the abode. But I cannot taste it, even by my best efforts. How may I taste it? So just to remind, there's a person speaking who's called God. So whatever he has as wish, he should actually fulfill easily, isn't it? But he is saying, my mind races to taste the pleasure experienced by that abode we were talking about. But I cannot taste it even by my best efforts. How may I taste it? So that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his Lila is also eternal. 
he's trying to taste a little bit of that. He's coming again and again and trying to taste that love. But it's an endless, eternal endeavor. Because Radharani's love is not only eternal, like he said before, it is also expanding in every moment. So he can never, ever get it complete. If someone, I can be the abode of that love, uh, if sometime I can be the abode of that love, only then may I taste its joy. Eta chinti rahe Krishna parama kautuki ridaye badaye brema lopa dak daki. Thinking in this way, Lord Krishna was curious to taste that love. His eager desire for that love increasingly blazed in his heart, blazing like a fire. Thinking in this way, Lord Krishna was curious to taste that love. His eager desire for that love increasingly blazed in his heart. So that is one desire why Krishna wants to come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So maybe some of the devotees, hidden or not hidden, want to share something on that also. you feel any time please come ask or share something or make comment Radhe Radhe Gauravani Radhe Radhe can you hear me nicely Danny yes. I can hear you nicely Radhe Radhe is such a beautiful glorification of Radhe Rani that's really amazing how uh, Krishna is called Rasika Shekhar because he can uh, taste the, the most. No? But in the end, Radhika is the 10 million time more relation, but nobody knows that. So it means that uh, uh, the love, the nature of the love that is hidden, you never say to that, to, about your love. And in this way, can, uh, love increases. So uh, this tell me something about this nature of, of hidden nature, hidden, uh, like uh, Naran Maharaj said, hidden part of devotion. That the uh, world of Manjaris and uh, Radhikas are very, very hidden. And because this is the reason why are so, so uh, potent in, in them. So it must be hidden. Uh, it will never be open. Otherwise, uh, it will not increase in this way like when it's hidden. This is something what come to me when I hear about, about this. That Krishna is called Rasika Shekhar, but uh, nobody knows that <laughs> she can relish 10 million times more. Thank you so very thank much. You. Thank you so much.
it's, 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 it's amazing, amazing this glorification of Radharani. It's such, uh, you never <laughs> got in the end of this well. No, it's so profound, so, so it will never uh, have the end, actually. It's, uh, like you said, it's always fresh, always new, and always richer. It's incre incredible that this is the, the, the potency of the love. Really, she is, she is the source of all love. Who else can be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just found a, a quote in verse number 82 from Chaitanya Charit Amrita, and there's written on the love journey, um, O Devi, you will call me by name to engage me in massaging those painful lotus feet, although you are Ripuncha Murtihi the very form of abundant bashfulness. So maybe that fits what you said, it's hidden. So actually the sari of bashfulness is always covering her rupa. She's always very shy. She's always hiding her nature and her love. And she has to also. She has so many friends around her. She cannot show her greatness. She would embarrass them also. <laughs> They would lose actually their hope. <laughs> to satisfy Krishna in any way. <laughs> One of Sri Radhika's 108 names is Ripata Vastra Guptangi. Ripata Vastra Guptangi. She whose body is concealed by a silken garment of bashfulness. Nichalacha Shyama Pata Sati Paradhana. This is Again, a quote of Chaitanya Chavit Amrita. She wears a blue silken sari of bashfulness. You will not call anyone by name to help you with anything. But now you are calling me because you are overwhelmed by feelings of great love for me. I am yours only. And in this way, you have accepted me. So that's a wonderful, a very wonderful sentence for us also that When we also hide under this sari of bashfulness, we are under her feet, serving her feet, not seen so much, just small little girls around Radharani. They are not group leaders, just some servants, small, smallest servants. Also in the same mood like Radharani. But actually they are the deepest way connected with Radharani which is possible. And they feel exactly what she feels. And again this is so great. And the humbleness of their love is their, their gratefulness.
Gorobani, you, you, said, you said before that uh, uh, we read that her love is so pure and so crooked, no? So pure and so perverse. It was the reverse, perverse, right? <laughs> okay. Yes. And in the same time, we can see this nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he wants to to taste, to, to go so deep in the feeling of Radhika, so that it is something very hidden, very intimately, and in the same time, he wants to distribute that to everyone. So this is this is quite this nature of Radharani, that in the same time, this opposite things is present in the same time, in maximum of his power. Right. <laughs> yes. And this is a good luck for us that it's not understandable. We cannot understand it. This is such a good luck for us. Because if you can understand something, then you tend to go the way of knowledge. But how you can go the way of love? Just when your understanding is ending, when your understanding is on an end, you cannot understand it, you cannot grab it. And even Krishna cannot understand that pure love, that selflessness, that deep love which is growing in every moment. He cannot grab it and he, he is God. He cannot. What to speak of us? So it's our good fortune that it's not understandable and we have to feel it. We have to let ourselves fall into it. Just let yourself fall. I don't know anything. I have no qualification. I'm nothing. I'm just like a dwarf trying to get the moon from the sky. It's not possible. It is not possible. But if it's even not possible for Krishna, then why it should be possible for me? So this gives such a hope, because our good fortune is actually the mercy of our Swamini. The mercy of our Swamini is our hope. The mercy of Swamini is our way. And only the mercy of Swamini is the entrance, actually. And the mercy of Swamini is represented in this world by the mercy of a real Guru. The one who is serving that Radharani's lotus feet. And in this way he can actually give us that mercy, connect us, and then drown us again and again, more and more, Again and again and again. If you want to wash something and it's very, very hard to get rid of this dirt, then you leave it in the water and again and again you try. <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> so, and then you scrap it. <laughs> so in this way, all these lilas, all this diving in is actually scrapping the dirt away. And in the end, the prema is there already, fully developed. 
It's already there in everyone's heart. The soul has this prema inside. Just the dirt has to go. Then we can see it and feel it again. And so this wish of Krishna actually that he wants to taste that love is also a very good example for us. Maybe we can also get this wish. I mean, if even he has this wish, <laughs> maybe it's also interesting for us. <laughs> like Prabhupada said, what a big man is doing Usually all are following, isn't it? <laughs> Someone well-known is doing something and the rest of the people wants to follow that. So Krishna is also quite well-known. <laughs> Everybody knows God. So if he is doing that, So let us see what what quote is next. Ah, very nice. So by hearing and chanting the great words of the Acharyas, a relish for this subject awakens. So by hearing and chanting the great words of the Acharyas, the trash is thrown out of the heart. And then the relish for this subject awakens. Hence it is said, Iha ye ek bar priye karna tvare, tara karna lope iha chati tena pare. Rasa tattva khyana hoi ihara shravana, brema bhakti poi rata krishnera charana. Anyone who has drunk this even once, through his ears, becomes greedy and cannot give it up anymore. Radhe. 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 Gurudev. Drunk through the air. Drinking through the air. This is the beautiful line you say. Drinking through the air is a there is no way to other thing to listen. When you drink, you only drink the water. When the air starts drinking, then that is the meaning of listening. Thanks from the air. Not we are drinking from the mouth, from we have to drink from the air. Other desires are over now to listen to other subjects. That's a drinking from the air. Anyone who has drunk this even once through the ears becomes greedy and cannot give it up anymore. Yeah.
Berichti. <laughs> By hearing this, one realizes the truth about rasa and one attains loving devotion for Radha and Krishna's lotus feet. Here ends the quote, Chaitanya Charit Amrita. And this is actually the beginning. It is said Shravanam, Kirtanam and so on. So by listening this nectar, everything starts. And it's really like this. When we heard it once, I mean really heard it, not just sitting in some class or sharing, but really hearing it means feel it. Try to go in with your feelings and really hear it. Then greediness will come. And we cannot give it up. So by the mercy of a pure devotee, we get this drug the first time. I will call it drug, because it makes addicted. So if we drink it once, we are addicted. Listening is a drunking, drinking. From the air is real drink. And the real addiction. And this addiction, we are up to wine. But this, this listening brings to divine to us. Only D is added in this mind. Material person also wine, need wine to to out of this habit. What he is doing, he want to come out from that. So he has to take the shelter of material thing. But who wants to go real drinking from the air? They reach to the divine, and that is also drunk. Divine people who are living in this conscious, they are also drunk. They behave like a drunk person. <laughs> they are also mad to be always to drinking. If they come down, again they want to drink something. Again and again I can see that this Chaitanya Chart Amitabha is such a wonderful gift. This is the beauty of Vilad Kusum Mandeli, who show you the beauty of Chaitanya Chart Amrita. You are doing very good job researching of Chaitanya Chaitanya through the Vilakusa Mantra. Very, very beautiful. That to do to us. It wasn't my idea, it was your idea. I'm just trying to do it. You told me, inside, you told me to do it. And really, I like it very much. Krishna took, took the mood of uh, 
Radhika and he wants to be in that mood, means he wants to be a student of Radhika. We, we take the center of the spiritual master to learn the mood of the spiritual master. Means he, he made this clear group. He said, uh, you are my guru and I am your student. How you yeah. sing to dance, I dance. What is in Bhakla? The dancing pupil, yes. Yeah. the Bangla. I cannot find it so no fast now. No, no problem. It will come. But it will come anyway after some time. I know it was here somewhere. I have so many books lying here open and. <laughs> you are researching. Ah, here. Okay. I have it. Krishna kohe ami hoira sera nidhana purna nanda maya ami chin moi purna tattva radhikara prema ama kora ya unmatta na jani radhara prema ache koto bol ye bole amare kore sarva dha vival. Radhikara Prema Guru Ami Shishyanat Sada Ama Nana Nitya Nachaya Udbhat. Yeah, Udbhat. <laughs> Radhikara Prema Guru Ami Shishyanat Sada Ama Nana Nitya Nachaya Udbhat. So, the one now, what do you say? That his love was crooked, no? What is the word? Yes, crooked and perverted. Ah, what is this? To, to make dance to Krishna, because her love changed every moment. She knows why to be angry with Krishna. Why when she has a love, why she has to be angry with Krishna? Because now she is, she is coming from Chandravadi. And Chandravadi gives too much love, but she is not angry to Krishna because rarely he goes to Krishna. So she becomes angry. To give new new type of punishment to, to Krishna. By showing that you, I'm angry to you because you were there, but this is not a fact. She wants to give something new, what Chandravali not give to him. So this is poverty, different type of things she is giving, only to Krishna, nothing else. Her mood is changing how to please him, how to give the new test to him. Nothing else is see. She's 
did not see anything out of Krishna. So Krishna says, I am the abode of transcendental flavors. I am the fully ecstatic, full transcendental truth. But Radhika's love is making me mad. <laughs> I don't know how much power there is in Radhika's love that it always overwhelms me. Jai Shri Radhe. This is the mercy of all Acharya who give Krishna and Radhika. First to know Krishna and when he will we will sign to Krishna, then slow and steady, we will know the ultimate goal. This is the ultimate goal, what you are explaining. Then, then Bhagavad Gita, but slow and steady, progressively it will come. Because it's a realization, is not philosophy. So Radhika's love is the guru, and I am the dancing disciple. She always makes me dance various dances. Sri Krishna considers to himself, I am the shelter of all transcendental bliss and flavors. And when my devotees taste even a drop of this bliss, and relish, they are able to give up all other attachment and they become totally mad. It is absolutely impossible to madden me. Second, I am the embodiment of full transcendental bliss. The whole world becomes mad from even a single drop of the ocean of my bliss. It is therefore impossible for anyone to make me happy. Thirdly, I am the full transcendental truth, the blissful experience of Krishna consciousness fulfills the desire of the whole world. No one is able to cover over my knowledge and drive me mad. But Sri Radhika's love is making the impossible possible. Her love is my guru wow. who makes me dance various dances like a dancing pupil. Sri Radhika is my guru because she is the teacher of me. She is the Radhanisha. So Radhika Krishna worship Radha. And 
ಅಧಿಕ ಈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲವ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಾಧಿಕಾ ದಾಸಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಮಾಂತು ಸೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ ರಾಧಿಕಾ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ so we are what we are radha that we have to follow who is conscious with krishna that is radha prabhupad bhagavad gita ends with the laser giving potency you want to be normal you have to take the pleasure giving potence self we i know understand this is my difficult this is prabhu pase sarup and sarup siddhi what is sarup i don't want to know then this is my problem and what to do sarup chindi perfection i have no sarup i don't want to identify myself sarup then i have to sure identify my physical body that is the point i will behave in the physical body in my spiritual body or physical body what i will recognize myself i will be a from there one day one day i listen uh, prabhu pad is writing guru pranali siddha pranali and manjari bhav sadhana is not good to those people who is practicing in ritual and yajna is not good i can give you that quotation also because ritual injunction people is in the bhagi bhakti and this is a rag subject not good for them who is in bodily consciousness and who want to do the ritual and external worship is not good not to that live in your ritual injunction because you have no desire for rag one question was that i say you see so is a body injection ritual injection no good to listen read and this subject and not no no that's sorry to know because you are practicing ritual injection by the way why to do this raga bhakti but if you are in raga bhakti why you think for by the way We are in action. We are crazy about good thing not a first rule. He said, "Not do this when you are in ritual injunction. Not do that when you are in rag bhakti ritual injunction topics. Right? Why is he working? Understand?" Yeah. Guru Dev Dharma is also a, lit- a religious uh, process and but usually people want to get arta from it 
So when we practice Vaidhi, it also seems to be like religion. So how to distinguish if someone wants to have something from the opulences of Krishna, that's why he's doing this dharma, or he really wants to grow and wants to become in a spiritual inclined, actually. He wants to come to Raga. So how to distinguish these people? Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Is in gunas. Gunas. In gunas means there are three gunas. Tamoguna, ignorance, passion, and goodness. Is all covered in gunas. But uh, for the Rag Bhakti devotee, there is a Pancham Pursat, fifth essence. That is, say, Prema Pursat. This is fifth effort. We have to decide that we are so, and I want to be loving to the every living being and to the Almighty Savior or Super Soul. This is Prema Purusha. Then his progress comes in Suddha Sattva. That, that practice brings us to Suddha Sattva, pure goodness that I start living in the soul consciousness. And this is six efforts. And seventh effort is a Vishuddha Sattva, a spiritual pure goodness, that is Sarupa. Said the Sarupa starts living. If we go down, one step we can go down. A totally zero not happen. If we ask, we should the sattva, we come to Suddha sattva. We are in Suddha sattva, we can come to the <coughs> Again, we can go up. So Pancham Pursat is the starting point of my soul practice. Pancham Pursat means from the all body, mind and all, we will try to offer to be loving. And sixth effort is to be in soul consciousness. Seventh effort is to be in the Sadhu consciousness. Which stage I am, I have to check that. But at the same time, Western world has to be balanced materially and spiritually. That is difficult for the Western world. India, you can do zero requirement. But Western world, you have to balance. If you are not balanced materially, good way, your spiritual way will not go. You cannot be in balance, then your your energy will divert. You have to balance to lead peaceful. If you are not peaceful in day-to-day -day material life balance, then in spiritual life you have no time to do. But our Western world nature, I am so unbalanced in the material problems. If all goes very comfortably, is not happy. 
I want some problem in material life. Then we separate. We do some crazy ideas that we don't like it and do. We cannot keep balance to cool down material circumstances. This is my problem. We have to be balanced. We have to make happy what we have. Unbalanced, easy to create the unbalancedness in material circumstances. It's nothing. We want to create more suffering and bring out myself from spiritual to material. Intelligent people not to. Yes, Gurudev, you're so right. This is really a problem of the Western uh, world that people are used to to chaos in her, in in their lives. Everything when has to. I was to be chaos. when I start traveling. I got the Sridhar Maharaj book in Spanish. So Sridhar Maharaj. These all books are his preacher, very divine works. So he is using one is a oriented and one is a occidental. Uh, so you see who is living in the body consciousness, they are occidental person. And who lives in the soul and sarup, they are oriented. And this book, I am traveling in 94-95, I got this book in Spanish, and I don't know one word of Spanish. Then I got the one translator who read to me, and then I understand that time, we have to be oriented, then we can a spiritual person, I can be. And I traveled in the Maya Nagari, in Patala Lok, in South America. <laughs> Patala Lok. Hell. Patala. And, and in that circumstances, because of mercy of Siddhar Maharaj and Paramadrati Maharaj, I was oriental. I was looking there, so I don't see outside anything. And I traveled nine months as a baby, <laughs> sannyasi, and I traveled with no problem. And this book, Oriental, Oriental, make me Oriental. <laughs> you see? Oriented, Occidental, we are Occidental. <laughs> And we come to the bodily consciousness and we go consciousness, we are on it. You are Indian or foreigner. This is no meaning. Meaning it is where you are living. Thank you. Guravani, yeah. thank you so much for choosing this nice subject. I am hesitate to share later, but I have to do it. Yes, uh, you have to do it. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to answer your question, how to understand this uh, Dharma following what I want to gain about that. I think in the Rupa Manjari Pada song, it's also singing Dharma, Dharma. Everything what I do in society, all the rituals, what I'm doing is only meant to reach the lotus feet of Rupa Manjari. So we have 
to some extent we have to follow also our culture where we are born in like this but the goal has to be fixed i think when we are really rupanuga and we associate with the rasika rupanuga vaishnava then our goal can be fixed and then we do maybe we do many dharma and karma and like this but was the goal to get lotus feet of rupa manjari if we don't have that then my all religion and my karmas all going in different way that i would say that association is important guidance of a rasika vaishnava yeah and my feeling the last lectures always is gurudev speaking about drinking with the ears how important is that we that we understand what is real listening it's not hepatitis coming it's not listening with the mind because drinking means that it somehow i am satiated it is liquid it has a flavor it satisfies my heart that means listening with the heart is listening listening with the mind is not required here in raga bhakti so drinking is the ears is important it should get the feelings we should get the feelings by listening right right yeah my dear I, we really relish here right but sometimes we could not be focus on you but i'm very happy you get this nice lecture bravo Radhe Radhe thank yeah. you very much so if i put it together you say first priority should be there your first priority in life should be fixed and then all other things are serving that first priority right yes yeah yeah yes and this is the wonderful thing how actually to fix this first priority by drinking the nectar of the mahajans again and again because they will actually explain us what should be our first priority in life right okay i just wanted to make it clear again so now i can start my bhajan to the mercy of you all so if someone is inspired to to talk next time about some uh, special verse of chaitanya charitamrita some quotes and you like to search a little bit in radharasa sudanidi or shri vilap kusumanjali then please do it and we can talk next time on that subject and see where we can go further in that